So uh, here we have um, an actual fern. Uh, and so we're talking about the phylum Terephytus. This is our new group uh, of plants. This group is also uh, a group of seedless plants like the bryophyta. So bryophytes are seedless, but the bryophytes are non-vascular. They have no vascular tissue. This group is now vascular. So this is going to be the first group with vascular tissues uh, to invade land and then really start to actually form ancient forests uh, and with actually very, very large um, tree-like uh, structures uh, made up of terephytes. Um, and so here's a, an actual example of one. Um, you can see uh, the scale of it. They're, they're much larger. This is the sporophyte plant, whereas the, um, the bryophyte sporophyte is very, very small. So first we'll be going through the life cycle, and then I'll be stopping a little bit here and there as I start to talk about some of these other uh, new terms. So some of the terms are going to be the same because a lot of the same parts of the life cycle, and there'll be some things that are, that are new. Right. So uh, we have our sporangium. which is then going to release our spores. So remember, inside the sporangium uh, is where we have meiosis. Producing the spores, which are 1N or haploid. So a spore then goes on and starts to develop um, into the, the new gametophyte. So here's our multicellular uh, plant starting to grow. This is, this is also a gametophyte, which is starting to get a little bit larger. And now on the gametophyte, what we're going to have are either one type uh, or the other. So we're going to have either the, the antheridia producing sperm, or an archegonia, with an egg inside it. The, for these plants, what we're going to have are either um, two types uh, among plants. Uh, we're going to have um, some that are going to be produ producing both the sperm and egg and others which will uh, only produce one type or the other. Some will only produce the sperm, some will only produce uh, the eggs. So here's an example where uh, the sperm from one uh, is then moves through the water. So again, water is required for dispersal. So we have a, a swimming sperm with a flagella uh, that swims in water. So it, you can only find terephytes, uh, the ferns, in, again, wet environments. So they, it has to be uh, not just where, oh, it rains sometimes, but there has to be enough water so that when reproduction occurs, the sperm can be released and actually swim to find then archegonia to then get inside and then fertilize the egg. So then we get the fertilized egg developing into a zygote. That's in here. And then the zygote is going to then start to develop. Now this is going to be 2N, right? The fusion of gametes. And we're going to start to grow our sporophyte plant. growing up here out of the archegonium, right? So this kind of is representing the gametophyte down here, and this is the sporophyte growing out of it here. Now, that's where we're gonna to start to get, uh, to have some things that are a little bit different. When the sporophyte plant grows, it's going to now differentiate the, um, the bryophyte had rhizoids, but we have actual roots. So roots are going to have true tissues in them, uh, and those tissues are going to uh, contain different types of cells uh, that are going to be part of what we call the vascular system. Now the vascular system of the vascular plants, we're going to 
focus on separately uh, and go over it in much more detail. But as sort of an introduction, uh, we're going to have really two main types of tissue here making up the vascular system, the xylem and the phloem. The xylem is going to be transporting mostly water and minerals. Whereas the phloem will transport more of the sugars, nutrients. So xylem is transporting uh, material that the plants will be taking up from the soil and then bringing that to the rest of the plant, whereas the phloem will be taking uh, the other chemicals that the plant produces itself, some of them the, from photosynthesis, and then distributing them also to other cells uh, in the plant that, that don't undergo photosynthesis. Um, so um, the vascular cells, or, sorry, in the xylem, there are vascular cells called tracheids, which are going to be these uh, tube-like shells tube-like cells, um, they're going to carry water. And they're also then going to be reinforced uh, by a protein called lignin. So it's going to reinforce these tracheids uh, so that they're tougher and that the plants can start to grow taller. So as they grow taller, they're going to be able to get more light. And as they grow taller, they're going to then outcompete other plants that are shorter than them uh, for for light and so they'll perform more photosynthesis and get more energy and so there then starts to become more of selection uh, for taller plants and they can only grow taller because one they have a vascular system that can move water up into taller structures but they also have the support for those tall structures so they don't just fall over and so that's kind of where the xylem comes in and like i said we'll get into that later and these tissues the xylem and phloem will then start starting off down here in the root will then move up through the stem into the leaves you know, of the plant. Now the leaves are the main photosynthetic organ. So this is where most photosynthesis takes place uh, in a plant, uh, is in the leaf. Leaves are usually uh, broad, flat uh, structures that inside have highly uh, branching uh, parts of the vascular system. What I'm kind of describing is a type of leaf usually referred to as a megaphyll. So this is sort of highly branching. Whereas a microfill is more uh, like a small spike. So there's usually a single branch. Just a little needle spike-like leaf. All right, so a very small uh, sort of structure. All right, so a, a microfill type leaf versus a megafill. Most of them are, are the megafill types. Uh, and then you can have modified leaves that are called sporophylls. Uh, and then so these modified um, sporophylls uh, will then develop the sporangia. So what should we have here? So, so these structures here coming off it are the sporangia. And that's kind of where we get back to the, the beginning here. So where we have a sporangia structure where then we have meiosis occurring inside it. The meiosis process will then produce the spores, and then in this case, the spores here are on the undersides uh, of the leaf. They're usually uh, organized, the sporangia are organized into little clusters called sori on ferns. So the sori is a cluster of these sporangia, and usually you could see them on the bottom. If you look really close on the bottom side uh, of the leaf, you'll see these, these dark little um, not dark necessarily, but they're bright little uh, kind of could be brownish so, sort of spots on the, the bottom side of the leaf, uh, and that's where we're going to find uh, the spores. So we now have roots, stems, and leaves with true tissues, 
and a vascular system running through them that's going to be able to bring water, like I said, from the soil up through the plant. And as they get even much, much larger, uh, they can transport it up. There's going to be structural support for that. Um, the xylem tissue specifically will be the structural support and that's supported by other material called lignin, which will uh, make it much more tough uh, and reinforced. Um, and that's kind of a, the next sort of step. Like I said, we're going to go into some of these things in more detail later. So it's hard right now. I'm trying to talk about some things to introduce them more, but they're not explained uh, completely because separately, I'm just going to be focused on vascular system and just explaining the vascular system. So we're just kind of introducing it right now. Uh, and so if you feel like you're missing pieces of it, that's fine because uh, as we get into um, other aspects of plant structure specifically, um, we'll cover them in more detail. So for right now, you really just have uh, the life cycle of the terophyta, uh, how it's similar to the bryophyta, and then some ways in which it's different. So how is it different? Here the sporophyte plant is much larger and the gametophyte plant is going to be very small. The way they're drawn here, you can't really tell, but this is a very small, not necessarily microscopic, but they, they are very difficult to find on a forest floor, whereas the gametophyte of the, the moss is the whole real plant is what you actually see when you, you pick up some moss you're holding the gametophyte plant you, it's very hard to ever find a gametophyte uh, plant of a fern or of, of any member of the terophyta uh, because they are so so small but then the uh, the sporophyte the 2n uh, diploid cell multicellular plant uh, grows to be very large and some of them can be extremely large you know in size part of that size uh, is now also what makes them different because they have a vascular system so they can move more uh, their nutrients throughout the body and to nourish their cells and and their tissues and they can support those tissues so they can continue to get much larger um, so those are kind of the some of the main main differences there so uh, that's just terophytes this is the next group so we said uh, originally a couple of lectures back we went through just plants and then the organization so we had the um, seedless non-vascular plants, which collectively there are a couple phyla there, but we just focus on bryophyta. Uh, now we have the seedless vascular plant, so we're getting the vascular system uh, on board, which we're starting to just address with a few terms, um, but they're also seedless. The next step is to then go into the seed-bearing plants, and so it's going to be the same with them. We're going to have um, conifers, which are going to be the member of the gymnosperms that we're going to focus on, and then the angiosperms, which are the flowering plants. Um, they're both going to produce seeds, so it'll be vascular plants that produce seeds, but then how are they going to be different? they will be flowering versus non-flowering, uh, and then there's going to be a lot more to it uh, in terms of structure. For each of them, we're going to just be going through this life cycle first, and then once we've covered all the life cycles and introduced a couple new terms, we're going to kind of then take a step back and then go through more detail on the structures. So if you're still looking for that, it is still, uh, still to come in the future.